in the last 200 years, we have gone through this scenario twice. An intersection of lines after which the old reality vanished in just a few years. We saw this with gaslight. We saw this with telephone lines. These three graphs show how systems critical to us were replaced by fundamentally new ones. Every time this met huge resistance, every time it threatened billions of dollars of invested money, habits and entire industries. And every time, despite this, the new system won and destroyed the old one. And along with it, it radically changed our daily lives. This isn't a cyclical model. Scientists know that cyclical models don't work. This is a model of linear development of institutions critical to society. Any model is only as good as its predictive power. And I want to present you with a method of interpretation from which it clearly follows 2026 will be the point of no return. Old solutions have already stopped coping, stopped developing and started degrading to minimum functionalism. We are talking about AI, about interaction, about control, and about the conceptual understanding of information, and about how this will destroy much of what you are used to as early as 2026. We prepared this episode in partnership with Genspark. 20 years ago, at the start of my design career, I spent hours convincing businesses that they needed a website. Of course, I had a direct interest, I wanted to sell my services, but I also truly believed that I was doing something very useful. I still remember the vivid emotions of misunderstanding. How can you treat the internet as a temporary hype, as a toy? For me, it was obvious. This is a communication revolution that changes the very fabric of society. But why have a website when there is a familiar system? Outdoor advertising and newspapers to tell people about yourself. Every home has a thick telephone directory. This is an old, familiar, unshakable system that has been working for many years. Every time such systems seem expensive, massive and established. But the mechanics of their death are always the same. The new system first looks like a toy for enthusiasts. But as soon as the new model gains critical mass, a local singularity occurs. The new system turns into a black hole and begins to grow explosively, sucking in the functions of all adjacent phenomena and interfaces. Tabs killed windows, the internet killed newspapers, electricity killed gas, cars killed cab drivers. And here it is very important to know two parameters of these transitions, the degradation and shrinking of the old, that part is clear, and the qualitative change. Technologies in such leaps are always hard to predict because they change the view of things. They change uh, the very nature of interaction with them. The first cars looked like carriages, but they changed quickly and then they changed cities, turning out to be the cause of a logistics revolution changing how people live in principle. The first electric lamps looked like gas ones, but electricity quickly turned out to be something much bigger than just a replacement for gas for lighting. It is this non-linearity that breeds resistance. People try to extend the line of the familiar into the future, they wait for a faster horse, but a revolution does not improve the old function. It creates a new reality in which there is simply no place for the old function. And of course, Luddites and retrogrades are very sad about the degradation of familiar systems. Exactly this is happening now with a system that has been defining for humanity for the last 60 years and now acts as if it is decaying before our eyes. I am speaking of course about the graphic user interface. What is the difference between these two interfaces? Both are for listening to music, but the first is full of individuality character. The second is functional, convenient and absolutely boring. The same goes for assistance. Yes, Clippy was annoying and maybe useless, but he had a characteristic, unique appearance. Modern smart assistants are the clearest example of the fading of an old system. Not because we are doing something wrong, but simply because there is no more room for this system. Do you know what this looks like? Guess what this is? Millions of kilometers of wires channels laid under the oceans. The largest machine built by humanity up to this moment. It's not the internet, it's the telephone network. It looks like a system impossible to overthrow, existing and developing, including physically, for more than 50 years, as of the year 2000. Billions have been invested in it. And this is the peak of landline phones 2005. It's amazing because we already have the internet, we already have mobile phones, pagers are gaining popularity. And humanity continues to stubbornly pull copper into every home. Exactly two years before the release of the iPhone, which will turn all this into garbage, the old system feels better than ever in its history. And then a cliff. Billions in investments turn into scrap metal buried in the ground. And we can see this as a clearly repeating pattern. The gas network grew for 50 years to become useless in a single decade of electrification. The order is always the same. First phase, long growth stage. Second phase, peak right before death, when the alternative already exists but is ignored. Third phase, rapid collapse when the new becomes the standard. The audience of the old becomes the audience of the new. The old is abandoned or remains for some separate special needs. 
And now let's see what is happening right now. Briefly, exactly the same thing is happening. The computer mouse and Windows are the legacy of 1968, the legendary presentation by Douglas Engelbart. If we put the growth of GUI users on the graph, we will see the same saturation pattern. And in 2022, GPT appears and makes noise in the news. The speed of adaptation is 50 times faster than the spread of the internet. And we have a fundamentally new way of interacting with information. We use the command line interface and messengers to communicate with superintelligence. It is literally like in the 19th century when electrical wires were laid inside old gas pipes, simply because it was more familiar. But factually, this is an infrastructural dead end, a limiting habit of the transition period. And by all indications, what will happen in 2026 will become the iPhone or the Edison bulb in the world of AI. And we have every reason to assume that it will be connected with agency. Already classic LLMs, ordinary chatbots, look like the first Nokia smartphones. Yes, they are smart, but this is an attempt to improve the classic dialer to stick new functions onto it. But we need a rollback in a good sense. We need to destroy familiar patterns to make room for new ones. And the main limitation is clear even now. AI must be able to act. New generation systems are already appearing that offer not just a chat, but a full-fledged agentic experience. The most popular example, which not everyone defines as the new generation of AI, is deep research systems, which represent this agent experience, so they are in almost all LLM services. But deep research is the first swallow of this very agentic revolution. And the clearest example of what this transition looks like in practice is Genspark, with whom we are preparing this video together. And I have a clear example of how the very essence of work changes because of this tool. For this, I want to show you something personal, and I hope useful. My typical research pipeline. I consider it useful because I studied topics for design work in almost the same way as I study now for preparing videos for this channel. Previously, the first stage, information gathering, took me at least four or five hours. Not reading or selecting, but simply iterating through search queries, clicking and saving links. A very understandable part, which is effectively an improved version of how people sat in libraries before the internet. Gathering books before diving into a topic is a big and difficult task. And the essence of this lies precisely in manual information management, not in analysis, not in synthesis, but in management, in the sense of moving and saving from one place to another. As long as this was a natural part of any research, it was perceived simply as part of intellectual work. But now, having a different experience, it seems to me absolutely not an intellectual part, but something like the work of an information loader. And I have absolutely no desire to return to such tasks. How does it happen now? The first step is the most understandable, the request. Teaching prompt engineering in our time is already bad form. I will just say the obvious thing, that the request must be understandable and complete. And here is the difference between Genspark and thinking models. I get an agentic response. This means that the system searched, drew conclusions, understood something, and continued the search with this understanding. This is already a sign of autonomy and agency, and this is already good. But in the Genspark interface, Face, this is not deep research yet. Having received general information, having understood if I need to dig further, I usually decide. And if yes, I transfer it to the hub where there is already a project with my context and I launch deep research a full-fledged one. Such details are because there is a big difference here from how deep research modes work in other services. And specifically this behavior, like in Genspark, in my opinion, is better for both the process and the result. Of course, the result of any deep research is not the final result. If your task is just to kill curiosity, then of course this is enough. In other cases, it is useful to read it in order to form a mental map and a general structure. This always helps in assimilating materials later, because next we go to read all the sources. And this is mandatory, and a vivid proof of this is the following effect. If you read only the report, it might seem that everything is clear and there are no questions left. But if you read all the sources, that is when more questions begin to arise. And this leads us to the last stage, returning to the super agent chat, not deep research, and asking all questions, sometimes even arguing with the AI until the map in the head is free of blank spots. And only after all this work can you go and think about how to turn this now whole piece of information into an interesting story. Before this, my work was arranged differently. I want to draw attention to where we should draw the line between different approaches. It's not about whether there is AI in one place and not in another. For example, Apple builds AI-powered text editing features directly into the system, and there's no context or agency involved there. Google is trying to expand this to Google Docs and Gmail, but implementations there are spotty, and most important, Importantly, ideologically, this is an addition to GUI. In our analogies, this is like making a home handset, a cordless phone not tied by a wire to the base station. 
This is good, it is a competitive advantage and will prolong the use of the technology, but factually this is definitely not where we are going. This is typical retrofuturism when the picture of the future is built on understanding the present and not on searching for points of radical shifts in functionality and interaction. The real shift happens when you build context together with agents. Right now, I am following several services that in my opinion have every chance to change the user experience with LLM radically. And regarding the giants, there is a feeling that they are too tied to the infrastructure of the past, which does not give them an exit to the new. Context collection during work and multi-agent systems are the next step. Some see hype in this, but I am deeply convinced that this is becoming more important than the sheer power of models, which are already smart enough for any task. Using the example of Genspark, it is perfectly clear what context collection is, when an LLM is not a set of chats, but a workspace. Once again, I want to emphasize it is not the functions themselves that are important, but the fact of collecting context during work. For full transparency, I would like to clarify the nature of the partnership with Genspark for creating this video. In this video, there is no and will not be an ad insert, although some calls to action will be sounded. Everything I will tell is an important integral part of the video topic. The video is a partnership created together with Genspark. And what we are telling here together is what I would tell exactly this way, just without the example of a specific service. Therefore, the presence of Genspark here does not make the information in this video biased or subject to influence. And that is why there is no ad insert here. I am truly sure that exactly such agentic systems are, if not the new iPhone, then a direct predictor. They create that very base and understanding of what the future will look like. The market has already appreciated this approach. Gainspark, with a team of only 30 people, received a valuation of $1 billion in just six months. Although for me, the numbers of 30 people and six months are more important here than the valuation. Because this is an indicator of the flexibility necessary for the transition period of such revolutions as the one happening right now. And it also means that they themselves actively use agentic systems. Look at the example of the difference. It's one thing when there is an assistant in the mail for writing texts. It knows specific correspondence and can help. This is a superstructure over an existing system. But if we completely transfer the interface almost into a workspace, it becomes part of the general context. I specifically avoid the word AI workspace because I am deeply convinced that AI is a certain basic superstructure, which as the technology adapts will simply fall off as unnecessary because it is inconvenient to insert AI before every service and name. AI, 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 AI. We don't say digital camera or electric light bulb, we say camera or light bulb. I highly recommend just trying to move your mail there for a while, simultaneously using it as your main working LLM. You can try it for free via the link. And it is exactly these details that form how we are going to break out of the usual frameworks so that it becomes clear exactly what from the old approaches we need to destroy. At the words about destruction, cognitive biases most often begin. And this is normal. We are humans. Our heads are wired that way. But in such moments, it is more important than ever to remain with a current understanding of the world because the risk of falling behind is noticeably higher than at other times. A simple fact helps me. Developers, investors, big companies, everyone loves AI and sees huge potential in it but those who are called by the offensive word consumers are resisting very much. Right before our eyes, a very vivid example occurred. At the Game Awards, two awards were taken away from the game Claire Obscure Expedition 33 because information surfaced that the developers experimented with AI. Behind AI, they see soullessness, artificiality. And what is very telling, they saw exactly the same thing behind many other revolutions. Photography is just chemistry and mechanics. Cars are soulless iron. Gas companies sponsored articles that electric light burns out, eyes causes madness, and that live wires are death traps. And this is understandable. Suddenly, values built on a familiar system collapse along with that system. I, for example, was always very valued by colleagues for deep knowledge in Excel, in how to build graphs and write formulas correctly. And now this turned out to be a useless skill which already does much more complex things by a simple request than I ever could. And it becomes hurtful. I spend dozens of hours learning this. But one needs to be honest, my value was not in knowing formulas. It was in the ability to find the answer. And if now the answer is found in a second without formulas, it means formulas were just a barrier, not a value. Humans were not born to interact with the world through a cursor and rectangular windows. Our brain is not a file system. Agentic systems are not just new software. This is a return to our biological firmware where context and intention are more important than the hierarchy of folders. And to pass this transition in 2026, you need access to this intelligence. Not limited, not stripped down, but full. That is why 
again Sparks offer is so important now and I gladly agree to the partnership on this video. They are opening unlimited access to all top models for the entire year of 2026, Gemini 3 Pro, GPT 5.2, Claude Opus 4.5, Nano Banana Pro. And in my opinion this is a very rational investment in your relevance at this time because resisting this is useless. Yes, for me personally as a designer it hurts. I spent 20 years learning what will become useless. I read your comments that GUI will remain in professional software and this is true. The death of a direction does not mean that it will disappear completely. After all, we still use gas. We have horse-drawn carriages, fax machines stand in offices, but all this is no longer developing. GUI is turning into a horse right now. My wish for you, don't miss this transition. Bye.